the Steamboat Institute in 2009, we had the good fortune of having Tony Blankley agree to speak and serve as our conference moderator. Tony and his wife, Linda Davis, enjoyed it so much that they came back the next year and the next. In fact, Tony and Linda became such an integral part of the Steamboat Institute that we gave Tony the nickname, the face of the Steamboat Institute. He thought that was really funny. Tony was editorial page editor of the Washington Times. He was a longtime panelist on the McLaughlin Group, which for you younger folks, that was the original political talk show before there were, were 10,000 of them all over uh, the internet and, and cable news. Um, he, that, and that's actually the show that is now hosted by Tom Rogan, who five years ago this month was our very first Blankley Fellow. How perfect is that? When Tony passed away early in 2012, we immediately knew that we had to do something to honor his memory, and it had to be something important and substantial. This year, we celebrate the fifth anniversary of the Tony Blankley Fellowship for Public Policy and American Exceptionalism. This fellowship provides high-profile recognition and financial support, including a stipend of $10,000 to emerging conservative thought leaders who share the principles and ideals espoused by Tony Blankley and the Steamboat Institute. And as a reminder, those principles are limited taxation and fiscal responsibility, limited government, free market capitalism, individual rights and responsibilities, and a strong national defense. Our selection committee includes Ed Meese, former Attorney General, Steve Hoffman, a former Assistant Secretary of Labor, Lauren Maddox, a former Assistant Secretary of Education, Tom McDevitt, the Chairman of the Washington Times, John O'Sullivan, who was Special Advisor and Speechwriter for Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, John Roberts, who was a Reagan White House uh, staff and previous uh, producer of the McLaughlin Group, Matt Spaulding, who is Associate Vice President and Dean of Educational Programs at Hillsdale College and also a member of our Steamboat Institute Board. Uh, also on the Selection Committee is Tom Rogan, our, our first uh, Blankley Fellowship recipient. And of course, uh, Tony's widow, Dr. Linda Davis, who you're going to hear from in just a moment. And now we have just a brief video. I think you will really enjoy this. It's highlights of our Blankley Fellows and their amazing work. Enjoy. <laughs> I mean, I've been fighting a liberal media in Washington for 30 years. The country ought to be based on individual liberty and limited government and, and low taxes. I think we all need to hold ourselves to a higher standard. This is why I need to be here for you. If they knew that, that's a gold mine. Reform the corporate tax code. It's a simple fact. What does it mean to be a U.S. citizen? You know, there are different groups of people who subscribe to different philosophies. If conservatives were in charge, we would all be better off. I wouldn't be a good conservative if I didn't say that, right? One of the best investigative journalists in the world. It's really taxpayers that are paying for this program. This is something that millennials are picking up the tab for your generation. I think this is a broader critique of the social justice movement. The media and the Democrats are going to do all they can to blame Republicans. It's important for conservatives to reach young women. We need to empower them with the knowledge and information they need. The question now that I'm hearing from a lot of pollsters and analysts on the Democratic side is that it's possible that he might be a victim of his own success. The bottom fell out with Harvey Weinstein, and I think that the best thing that we can compare this to is actually the, the Dreyfus affair in 19th century France. I would be very skeptical of any pundit who says X or any politician who says Y definitively. I am incredibly humbled and honored for the opportunity to remind people of Mr. Blankley's important legacy through my work. And now, to present this year's Fellowship Awards, I'd like to ask Linda Davis to please come up to the stage. Hi, 
everybody. Hi. Thank you. It was such an honor to hear that prayer and to be able to participate in the anthem. And for me, as a former member of the military, to be able to salute our flag when it's so seldom we can do that nowadays. I'm just so proud to be here with all of you. Thank you. And Tony, you know, Tony coming, having been born in London and his parents growing up in World War II, having seen them fight so hard and, and his, his role model of Winston Churchill, that knowing what liberty meant, what freedom meant, those are the principles that you all are supporting here at Steamboat and that these incredible young people are, um, are avidly, doggedly, and frankly, fearlessly fighting for. Um, I'm not sure I would have the, um, well, I will not use an impolite term, but I would have what it takes nowadays. Uh, you can you know, um, fill in the blank, whatever it is, um, to, to, to go up and, and, and fight what is, is obviously a wall of opposition that is very, very strong on all fronts. Um, I think fearless is a word that describes these fellows and their colleagues. And I am, I am humbled and honored that, that they'll be the ones who will, um, with our sons, be able to um, lead the way and take over. I, I came, Tony and I came to D.C., in fact, with President Reagan and, and Ed Meese over 40 years ago. And it was that enthusiasm for the potential. And this is what I see in our fellows. So I'm so thrilled that... Um, tonight that we're able to award um, not one, but two um, fellows. I mean, frankly, we can, I can use a battalion. I can use a whole division. You know, we can use as many of these that we can uh, support. And we had exceptional um, candidates, again, and applicants. And we um, actually, uh, Jennifer, if I'm allowed to say that, we... Um, we, we had literally a tie. And so, um, so we, thankfully, the two of them were, um, were so known to one another and graciously agreed to serve together. Um, and that will um, multiply the voice that we have to forward the, the conversation about the principles that you all support so much and talk about it in a factual, and in an informed and an unbiased, and frankly, what I loved about um, our luncheon speaker, in a graceful and polite manner, which you know was one of Tony's hallmarks, that he would never shout at anybody. Um, yeah. I, I miss him personally every day, and, and I miss professionally, like, what would Tony say? And I know tomorrow the, the, our fellows are going to give us a great presentation on some of the things that they believe that he might say. So I'm going to let Jennifer, um, we'll, we'll announce, and uh, you all know, um, and, um, and hand out some little gifts. But um, I first want to say, and I would be remiss without thanking Jennifer personally. Um, Jennifer... The, the fact that we have the fellows, the fact that we're all here tonight, this is Jennifer's genius. And this is what she works tirelessly for, for all of us, and for the America that she believes so strongly with. So with her and Rick, I just thank you so much for starting the fellows and for allowing us all to come together to support you in that effort, Jennifer. Alphabetical order. 
Oh, I think alphabetical is the only way the okay. AP would let us do it. Okay, we'll do it alphabetical order. Go ahead. Do you, want to, you want to start with Amber? Uh, the, the first very exceptional uh, Tony Blankley fellow that we would like to award this to is uh, Amber Athey. say a few words. I know I introduced you to Amber earlier today when she moderated a panel, but she is the White House correspondent for the Daily Caller and just an extremely talented, what, what, 26 years old? 25. Oh, 25. <laughs> You're aging me, Jennifer. Come on. <laughs> Folks, this is the future of journalism in America. For those who think the media is hopeless, this is the, f the future of journalism. And now I think what we should do is go ahead and award the second fellowship, and then they're each going to speak to you for just uh, two or three minutes each. But rather than make Sauger sit in the back and wait, <laughs> we would like to present the second fellowship this year, as Linda said, the first time we've ever awarded two fellowships to the chief Washington correspondent for The Hill and Hill TV, Sagar and Jetty. We have one more thing to give them. This is the really fun part. Some of you know what this is. Now, Tony Blankley, for those of you who don't remember, was a very stylish British gentleman. And he always wore these wonderful saddle Oxford shoes when he was on the McLaughlin group. So each year, the Blankley Fellows, some of them you saw earlier today, get this special pair of shoes awarded to them. This is really special. You're part of the family now. There's no getting out. <laughs> you see your shoes? See, these shoes may be the, these are the big ones. These are Sagar shoes. And then there's one more. These are amazing. Kind of similar, actually. Yeah, those look a little bit like Phil's, but they're different. So you are a little bit like, but different. Okay. <laughs> oh, mine are a different color. Yours are. Oh, wow. And now I would say, once again, using the highly, highly scientific method of alphabetical order, we will have uh, Amber make a few brief remarks, and then we'll hear from Sagar. Well, first of all, thank you so much. I am truly honored to be here. Uh, when Jennifer called me with the news, uh, my heart started fluttering. I was, I was so excited. Um, thank you so much to the Steamboot Institute and, and Linda for all that you do for conservatism and for young journalists um, in the United States. Uh, and you know, just the Tony Blankley Fellows in general are a group that I personally have looked, looked up to for a very long time and, and they're people that I consider friends. So it's uh, really great to join a group of truly the premier journalists and pundits and, and media personalities in, uh, in this country. Um, and I, I just really cannot stress enough how vital this fellowship is for young conservative journalists like myself. For a long time, the news of the day was decided by just a few uh, 
establishment media outlets by the broadcast news networks. The New York Times would put out the news of the day, and then when you got to your evening broadcast, you would watch your NBCs and your CBSs, and, and everyone got their news from that. And the American people, without even realizing it, were really digesting liberal talking points um, from these news organizations. Uh, and luckily, in such a short time, we've come a very long way uh, with the rise of the internet and social media and the digitization of news. There's been a huge opportunity for conservative news outlets to enter that sphere and start to provide a bit of much needed balance to the media landscape. And also just to provide honesty and facts and truth to people who were really begging for it. <laughs> And, and one of the things that the Steamboat Institute and, and the late Tony Blankley really believed in was the free market. And it's really wonderful to watch how people have had the freedom to choose where they get their news from uh, in this era and to be able to seek out the conservative and, in, and independent news outlets who are doing what for so long the establishment liberal media has failed to do, which is provide people with the truth. And if CNN's ratings are any metric, people are really flocking uh, to people like myself and Sagar and the other Tony Blankley fellows who are doing our best um, to talk about the issues that they care about. And let me tell you, as a member of the White House Press Corps, uh, there has never been a time where we need more balance than we do today. I mean, if you're at any event, you will notice that there are 15 to 30 reporters who ask the same question over and over and over <laughs> and it is exhausting and if you're a person in the press corps who asks something that's not mr president why are you a racist or mr president why are you in bed with vladimir putin the rest of the press corps turns around and they look at you like you're crazy for asking about the issues that the American people actually care about, which is their economic well-being, their individual liberties, not Russia. And we're so grateful to Tony Blankley for being one of the pioneers of this new media landscape, giving people the opportunity to hear the news from a different perspective, and doing it with the class and sass uh, that we know that he was very capable of. Of course, one of the, the major challenges facing conservative media is because we haven't been around for 30 or you know 100 years, is we don't have the same resources or finances as the establishment media outlets. Um, so it's not always a very uh, enticing profession for young people to go into. Uh, you really have to be down for the cause. You have to be really passionate about it. But the wonderful thing that the Steamboat Institute is doing through the Tony Blankley Fellowship is they're really helping provide opportunity for young people who are interested in going out there and sharing the truth and sharing conservative principles through the media and to the American people. Um, so really, let's give them a round of applause for all that they do to make that possible. And, and I have to say uh, one more thing. As, as, a, as the daughter of a plumber and a homemaker who, who came from blue-collar America and has felt like the media has failed to represent people like my family for so long, uh, it's just such an honor to be standing up here. I'm really so grateful. I never thought that I would be here. Um, and I just really cannot thank the Steamboat Institute and Jennifer and Linda and everyone else involved in this decision enough for everything that they do for young conservative journalists and really just trying to turn the tide um, and give voice back to the people who for so long have been so voiceless. So thank you again. I'm very truly honored. Big footsteps to follow. <laughs> Thanks, Amber. And I want to thank everybody here. I want to thank Jennifer. I want to thank Rick. 
all of the supporters of the Steamboat Institute for making something like this so possible. Like Amber said, when you are a young conservative and you are trying to start out in media, thinking that there are actually places which will support you, which will lift up your work, which will support what you're doing, is almost unfathomable unfathomable when you look out and you see the landscape that you face. And so to just to see everybody here gathered today and to be honored by this fellowship alongside Amber and Linda to stand in the footsteps of your husband and so many who have honored his legacy, I'm just, I'm so grateful to all of you. And it's funny, before I had my current job at the Hill where I co-host the show, Rising as the Conservative Host, I had Amber's job. And so I interviewed President Trump four times. I had the opportunity to ask him many questions at joint press conferences alongside world leaders. And without fail, every time my name was called, there was a groan in the White House press corps. <laughs> Jim Acosta, Jim Acosta once went on CNN and accused me of playing t-ball in the Rose Garden with the president because I dared ask him about the Supreme Court and not the Mueller investigation. The Supreme Court, I should note, is the number one reason why conservatives voted for Donald Trump. And the Mueller report in the Pew Research polling I've seen ranks around 13 to 15 in terms of voter preferences. So you can decide which of those journalists was asking a question which had actually mattered to the American people. And I think that that very much exemplifies why this fellowship is needed, why conservative journalists are needed, in order to ask the questions and hold people to account for the 65 million people who voted for Donald Trump for president. So many of these White House press corps journalists, liberal journalists, are so concerned with pleasing themselves and with pleasing their friends than they are with asking the questions and holding the people of power to account for the actual people in this country. And that's something that I think any actual conservative or fair journalist should aspire to, and I'm so honored to be part of this legacy, so thank you so much, Jennifer. I really appreciate it. I want to just reiterate again how honored I am to stand uh, in these footsteps, Linda, and so thank you so much for honoring me, for honoring Amber, for honoring conservative journalists who dare stand against the status quo, who dare to profess a love for their country, for free enterprise, for any of the things that we all hold dear. And I, I think that the best exemplification of this was today, where there was a panel on socialism versus capitalism. Show me a liberal organization that spends a single second trying to understand how any of us in this room actually believe. They will write us off with a single second. And we take the opportunity to have a thoughtful discussion with the other side and to consider those points. And that's why ultimately I have a lot of optimism for conservatism in this country. And thank you so much again. Thanks so much to Linda, to Tony, to Jennifer, and to all the supporters here at the Steamboat Institute. It is great work that we're all doing. Thank you so much. I'm going to take a point of privilege. Um, many of you, I'm here in a personal capacity. I'm not here in a partisan um, capacity. I do happen to work for somebody who lives in the White House currently, um, but that's not the role I'm in here. But I am thrilled that as I, my sell-by date is expired. I'm, you know, like it is, it is, it is, my time is gone, but to have these people, these young people, these fearless, fearless advocates, informed, intelligent, you know, willing to go in and, and stand up for all of us and for our children and grandchildren and their children and grandchildren, we are so blessed. Thank you again, Jennifer.